So the next session that, that we've got uh, in plan here uh, is a session by Claudia and Andre. And it's titled Librarians and Wikimedia, a long history or a long story, uh, the way I saw the first slide. Uh, now, you, you have 45 minutes. Uh, if you need uh, moderation or anything, just let us know. The floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. Um, some of you might have seen a very similar presentation at Wikimania this year. Uh, the content is mostly the same. Uh, what's different is that we added some um, some insights from other countries, and we were hoping to get a librarian here to talk about uh, their experience uh, working with us. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be possible, but oh well. Um, we'll try to fit the presentations in about 20, 25 minutes, so we get about um, half the time uh, open for discussions. Um, to see how the interaction with librarians and um, um, you know the the general their general participation is happening in other in other countries in the area, uh, and if nobody wants to share, then we have some more content that, <laughs> that we can uh, show you. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm Strainu. Most of you know me probably from the other meetings in the past year, maybe even in person. Uh, with me uh, is Claudia Sherbanuzza, PhD from the Progress Foundation. Uh, she has been a tremendous help for the community to uh, engage in librarians, uh, with librarians in throughout the country and even in Moldova. Uh, why we're doing this session? Well, we thought about um, the way the difficulties that we've seen, and we see it as a way to to empower uh, silent voices in our projects in in Wikipedia and related uh, projects. Uh, you'll see that uh, this was our experience, but it's not exactly the same in other countries. Uh, still, it can be very interesting. Uh, what we're going to show you is a bit about our experience with One Lib One Ref, um, a bit about uh, the recent or not so recent, depending on your age, historical context, um, uh, and what that made uh, to libraries and their experience with censorship. And then, as I said, we're going to have about half the time for open discussions. Um, so the content is mostly about Romania and Moldova, and then we'll have a short film about um, what's happening in Ukraine with libraries. So how we started was um, One Lib, One Ref. For those of you who don't know what lib, One Lib, One Ref is, it's an attempt to have librarians fix references. Uh, it goes on the idea that um, librarians are good with references. <laughs> So they might be interested in, you know, finding references for Wikipedia content. And uh, our first attempts were in 2017 and 2018. We followed the international re recipe um, to the to the comma, um, but and used former members of the community as liaison. You'll see why that's important in, in just a bit. Uh, we had Saturday events in small branches of the city libraries in Bucharest and Chisinau, and the participation was a bit disappointing. <laughs> all in all, we, we gathered about um, five people in 2017 and seven people in 2018. Uh, so it was more like a you know, coffee meeting, <laughs> just like in this picture. Uh, and we're not, we weren't very happy with it. So in 2019, we dropped the ref part and we decided to follow the, the librarians. Um, what we changed was that uh, we used the network of libraries that already existed. Uh, we had a series of events done in libraries during the working week. And we even had some guests from Germany talking about uh, Wikimedia and Wikipedia. Uh, and instead of adding references, we focused on writing articles about pretty much whatever the, the participants were interested. That's why the ref part, we kind of dropped it off. So what happened was that we engaged many more people, uh, 50 people in total, um, over three three meetings. We managed to, to get some decent articles on Wikipedia, not a lot of them, but, you know, some. Uh, but the interest was still limited, and that goes twofold. On one hand, people were 
uh, were not happy to to actually be in those meetings. Some of them, of course, uh, they were sent by their bosses, uh, so uh, not a lot of engagement. And then uh, they didn't really understand the whole idea behind it. That's what we felt. So we had just one active user after the events, and she's here with us today presenting. Um, then uh, came the pandemic. Like for everyone, uh, that meant lockdown. That meant uh, online courses. Uh, and actually, this time, uh, it turned out that uh, the initiative came from libraries. I, I have uh, been contacted uh, shortly after the lockdown started by a lady on the Brashov County Library, um, which said, you know, we were all working from home and it's maybe a good idea to dive deep on what you told us last year. And I said, great, let's let's try it out, but let's let's give the librarians a little bit more time, right? So we went to an online course model with weekly homeworks and monthly video meetings. Um, so each week uh, they would get a homework, uh, which would build up to a full article. And um, each month we met and they could ask directly their questions and, you know, get the explanations and try things out in groups and so on. We do manage to get a significant number of decent articles and even a few good ones. Uh, Big grade if you're familiar with um, the English Wikipedia um, quality model, which we use as well. And, this, and there was significantly more interest because people would join voluntarily the course, right? They weren't pushed by their bosses. They were there because they wanted to be. Uh, but also judging by the number of questions, feedback, and so on. And the good part is a few users still edit. At least one user from each online course uh, has kept editing. Maybe not very much. They're not extremely active, but, you know, they're, they're keeping the content coming and uh, the, um, the connections going. What we learned is that um, librarians did not really like to learn independently. They, they wanted to have like a framework uh, of guidance that would uh, push them in the right direction. Um, they didn't want to invest a lot of time in discovering and reading stuff and so on. They, they wanted to be shown what to, to read, what to, to get out of it. And also they had no experience in team and community work. Um, when they received a message on their talk page, they would go, get all scared and nervous and so on. Um, and that was one of the, the most shocking things for me, at least that, that I discovered. So they were not used in, you know, interacting with other, uh, users. Also, that comes with a strong ownership of content, but that's not unusual for people outside Wikipedia. Um, and they also want to control the outcomes. They're, they're, they're always asking like, oh, but what if I do this and I put this in a certain way, in a certain layout and so on? And you have to explain to them that, you know, uh, Wikipedia is read on mobile as well as on desktop and so on. And you can't really test everything. And you have to, uh, to leave the formatting part to the software mostly. So to get a reliable, uh, outcome. Um, and now I'm going to give the floor to, uh, to Claudia, which uh, will try to explain to you a bit about the history uh, which goes uh, to justify this behavior that we... we to the saw. why. To the why. Yeah, to the uh, why. If, you, if you can just go back to the previous slide before, before we start, um, because um, just listening to Gorana's presentation earlier and uh, yesterday, um, I don't think these findings are surprising to many of you. Um, and um, not being surprising for you, um, as, as we go to the next slide, um, listening to, um, to the discussion yesterday about the community struggles and um, uh, really, really the, um, how hard it is to really communicate effectively, uh, that was no surprise for me <laughs> to listen uh, to listen to this uh, because um, we do share um, a common history in the region, and oftentimes when we when we go outside our block, if you will, uh, people just mingle us together like you know we have a, a, sh 
uh, a similar past, uh, but then we know that big differences between our countries and our cultures. But we cannot put aside the, the, the de decades of uh, controlled um, regime and um, censorship that we, uh, we went through, that our culture went through. And uh, when we think about um, Wiki Wikimedia community, um, how we work with information, it's connected to where we come from and where our, our history has been. Right. So um, the censorship and the control of information were the norm in all our countries for decades. And we really cannot escape that just like that. You know, no matter how, how good editors we are, how uh, willing we are to do this hard work, we cannot do this alone. And that's why I think it's important to to look for uh, partners that can help us um, move our own cultures into a, a more open um, culture and in a culture where information is really healthy to circulate uh, freely and we not keep pushing it and try to get it out of people, um, which is the case in many of our countries. So um, to that point, uh, I think it, it's good if we spend a few minutes just to think about you know, how this history affected um, librarians who, again, I think are very good partners, can be very good partners uh, with um, Wikimedia community if we really understand each other better. So uh, the example that I'm gonna give you comes from Romania because this is where uh, I did my PhD research. So I studied the um, public librarians um, in the public library services in 1970s and 1980s, communist Romania. I wanted to see, you know, what would a public library service look like in a communist regime? And um, there are many findings uh, which are related to the profession. Um, but what at the core of the idea is that um, libraries were a political instrument. Uh, and I would dare to say that not only libraries, but all the memory institutions, the GLAM institutions were uh, in this very complicated structure, but they were under political control. And this political control did not had just one point, pressure point. It had many pressure points at different levels. So you had the central, the regional, and the local levels all pu uh, putting a lot of pressure on these public um, institutions. And censorship were, was practiced continuously. You know, there were moments when the tactics changed, the approaches changes, but the idea was that information was never to be really free. Uh, and um, that led in a profession that, you know, at the core was dealing with information to an internalized censorship. So our librarians, uh, uh, when they become librarian, even to this day, um, inherit a little a bit of self-censorship and fear to really put information out there um, from the past generations um, that um, did this uh, out of need uh, to survive and to exist. And uh, just to give you an example of, uh, you know, how internalized censorship look like, um, in the picture, uh, you have images from uh, a branch library in the heart of Romania in Mureș County. Uh, and that's a technical um, library branch, which was quite uh, unusual for um, and modern actually for 1970s to, for a public library to open um, a branch just for technical and uh, uh, this new engineering information that were out there in, the, in, in that uh, period of time. And uh, I did interviews there. And it was interesting to find out uh, that um, if you were an engineer at the time and uh, you went to the library to look for uh, in most updated information, uh, the librarian would help you find whatever was available in the library. But knowing from the beginning that in the library, uh, uh, not everything was available. So if the librarian trusted you and you look like somebody who's really serious and would not turn them to the police, the librarian might suggest that you should go to Bucharest to the US Embassy Library, where they could really help you find the uh, most updated information on the topic that you're interested in, because they would have access to, you know, the free 
uh, three world uh, information, but the trust was supposed to be there. Yeah, so even though librarian would know that information, uh, he or she would not share it to you uh, just freely. And um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I, I, to this day, I still see, you know, some kind of similar behavior with uh, libraries in our, in our country. So uh, going back to the, the trauma, if you will, uh, of, of those decades, is that within the librarianship, within the public librarianship, at least, which was the focus on my dissertation, uh, there was a shift in professional values. And this shift was never unshifted. <laughs> so nobody really tried to put things back to normal in a systemic way, right? We had um, decentralization, we had all this new technology coming over us. So really the profession of librarianship is uh, out there looking for an identity. Um, and I strongly believe that working with the uh, Wikimedia community uh, will help librarians really uh, find their way in uh, how they can best help their communities, how they can best um, uh, promote and take care of the local history for their libraries, so on and so forth. If we can go to the next slide. So because of this shift in, in, in values, um, and self-censorship practices that I've seen, um, I've seen for, for, for in many, many libra libraries. Um, we like to call them uh, silent voices. Um, so libraries, in, instead of really pushing their content out, really being proud of what they have and really being open to, to um, partnership and uh, um, showing, to the world what they have and encouraging their communities to learn, they are still shy and they're still not uh, letting their voice out. So um, I would let Andre uh, conclude the, the, the findings because we spend a lot of time thinking, so why we're seeing what we're seeing in our, in our collaboration with librarians? Year after year, um, um, attempt after attempt, we are still learning ways in which uh, we think we are helping uh, librarians um, get better at their job and at the same time get librarians to contribute valuable information to the um, um, community. Thank you, Claudia. Um, so we have here three conclusions, I would say three ideas on how to help these silent, uh, silenced voices. Uh, first is focus on their existing content. Um, the second is to actually decide if you want to include them. Um, this is an important step because uh, when you decide to, to be inclusive of a certain um, category of people, that means extra work for you as the person who um, is the liaison bet between the community and that uh, those people outside the community at the beginning of the project, uh, but also for the community, right? Because um, it helps to create and adapt the space for their contributions. Um, as we all know, um, Wikipedia can be a scary and aggressive um, and very male uh, space at times. Not always, but you know, it happens more often that, than we would like. Um, so, you know, act, actually adapting the space for, for new contributions and new ways of thinking uh, requires changes to your community's practice. And uh, we all know how easy that is. Uh, easy, of course, between uh, brackets because <laughs> it's never easy. Um, but still, this is worth it. We feel that it's worth it at the end because uh, the level of uh, insight and the level of content they can bring is significant. And it also diversifies um, the, um, the breadth of content that's available on your Wikipedia because uh, some of the stuff that uh, they uh, librarians write about can be really original, really not well covered uh, in the project. Right, let's move on to how we're planning on scaling uh, beyond the current project. Um, projects. We, we are 
currently moving to learning circles and social networks, uh, which is uh, online courses targeted at fixing mistakes uh, instead of writing articles. And also heavily relies on the personalized first day project. Um, this is important because uh, the personalized first day if it's not yet available on your project, uh, I can tell you a bit about it and or show you, is a personalized uh, guidance for each newcomer. Uh, and it allows them, it gives them a mentor, first of all, an experienced Wikipedian, which has the time to answer questions. Uh, it gives them tasks that you can do uh, to you know, get familiar with the uh, policies and the uh, editing and so on. Uh, and also, uh, kind of keeps them in, on track, right? They can see their progress. They can see their impact. They can actually see um, the number of views um, their articles have, which is very interesting, I think, uh, because it's actually, you know, it shows you how much impact you had. Um, the retention for this new learning circle idea is still to be determined, but we estimate that uh, at least one user per course is is keeping is still editing about a month after the course ended well i'm, I'm gonna update you on this one because uh, i'm i'm just leading the second uh, learning circle uh, group and i went back to look and there are uh, three people from the first course who went back and edit from time to time and uh, we are wrapping up the, the second learning circle for uh, librarians and i'm hoping the retention will be higher Cool. And we're also trying to move into media. Uh, we have this Wiki Loves Romania idea, which is a um, very old idea of mine, which I never put into practice until now. Uh, it's pretty much like any other Wiki Loves contests, uh, focused on Romanian uh, villages and cities and so on, uh, because only a th about a third of all the, um, all the villages in Romania have a picture. Uh, so we invited people, um, we invited everyone as usual, uh, with the Wiki Loves contest, but we focused particularly, uh, on librarians and, uh, memory institutions. Uh, and particularly we, we use that as a open, for opening doors, right? For, um, showing them what can be done on Wikipedia and inviting them to open their collections, inviting, uh, them to upload already existing digitized content uh, to such events uh, as a first step into a bigger collaboration in the end. Uh, here are the references used in the, in the presentation as well as the list of images. And that was about it from us. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we open up for questions, let's take a look at what's happening in Ukraine. It's a short uh, four-minute movie, and then we'll... Yeah, just before before you click start on that one, I just want to uh, present the context, because Andre mentioned earlier uh, using existing network of librarians. So um, from the presentation of the German guest at the National Library, uh, there was a librarian from Brasov who participated, actually a couple of librarians from Brasov. And then when the pandemic hit, Andre mentioned that he was uh, looked up by the librarians from Brasov because they participated in, then, in that uh, initial meeting and then they did this online course. Um, and uh, so this is an existing network of libraries. Uh, the, our guest, uh, video guest today is a librarian that I work with um, in a different project from Ukraine, they're, um, they're really, really uh, uh, innovative librarians that do projects for their community. And they're really trying to in engage active citizens more with libraries. Um, and uh, when we prepared this presentation, I was like, I'm not sure what they're doing with Wikipedia, but I'm sure they're doing something. And um, here it is, here is uh, from Lviv, uh, Ukraine, what uh, we hear now. Hello everyone, my name is Katarina Alexeyenka and I'm from Lviv Public Library. And now I try to tell you a little bit about Wikipedia and libraries in Ukraine, about our partnership. 
In Ukraine, we have NGO Wikimedia, non-profit organization, regional department of Wikimedia Fund. It promotes and supports Project Wikimedia, organize and many different formats of training webinars about Wikipedia and uh, uh, Wikimedia possibilities. Um, there are involved students, uh, scientists, editors, collaborate with libraries, universities, Sorry about that, some technical issues. Let's try again. Uh, did my internet just drop? No? Okay. I can hear you, but the video crashed somehow. Yeah, let's try again. and supports Project Wikimedia, organize and many different formats of training webinars about Wikipedia and uh, uh, Wikimedia possibilities. Um, there are involved students, uh, scientists, editors, collaborate with libraries, university and educational center, uh, help others, organization and community share and use materials from Wikimedia Fund. Now you can see posters Wikimedia events. First picture, it's about project Wiki Loves Earth and Wiki Loves Monuments. There is about collection information, materials, photos about Earth, environment, nature and culture monuments in Ukraine. They are often make thematics week uh, for writing article. For example, picture 3, the week of Ukrainian language in Wikipedia, make popular article about national culture, focus on native language. More information about Wikimedia activities you can get from the site and Facebook page of Me Wikimedia Ukraine. Welcome! Every year Wikimedia Ukraine on Wikipedia Birthday makes Wikimarathon. This event takes place in the library, schools, scientific centers and university. It's uh, open for everyone who wants uh, to learn how to edit Wikipedia, write articles, add materials in uh, Wikifans. This is how our collaboration with Wikipedia at the local level in Lviv begins. We realize that libraries and Wikipedia are very similar in their various tasks and aims. It's about to provide people with access to information. Thanks to the cooperation, three years ago we have opened a date library which is inspired by Wikipedia ideas, Wiki library. The new space was become a Wikipedia's office, a place for different educational format where everyone can write and edit Wikipedia, develop the organization network, involve new Wiki volunteers. Now you can see one of examples of uh, our events in Wiki Library. Before COVID-19, in our library, together with Wiki Launchers, I write articles and make different open events. Picture two. But quarantine is a good time to stay home and edit free encyclopedia. Picture one. Besides of it, the Wiki Library, together with Wikimedia, promote ideas about free shares information in our digital world. On picture 3, you can see events, it's a film watch, the story of Aaron Schwartz, it's a story about of a man who, from whom the free internet, the free sharing of knowledge, it's very important. We believe in future development and new formats of cooperation between the library and Wikipedia. Thank you for your attention and time. I hope this short video will be useful and interesting for you. Thank you. Uh, and, and to wrap up the, the presentation from Ukraine, I want to mention that if you're looking for partners in Ukraine, the Library Association is a very strong partner that we have in Ukraine. And I would highly recommend it for um, to think about national uh, projects and partnership with them. Thank you, Andre, and, uh, and thank you, Claudia. Um, you well, did uh, mention that, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, since we have about 15 minutes uh, left, I think we can open it up to um, to the um, to the audience. See if anyone else wants to talk about their experience with um, the. That's libraries. what I wanted to recommend, and I can already see one raised hand by Renvoy. 
Uh, I'll turn over the microphone to you. Uh, yeah, hello to everyone. Hello. Um, yes, uh, I'm uh, Renovoy and a uh, member of Wikimedia Ukraine and also the member of organizational committee of um, projects uh, with librarians that we have right now. Actually, it ended just uh, a day ago. Uh, in this, in this writing project of yeah, writing uh, articles directly mm, uh, that were directly organized for uh, librarians. Uh, it's, it's called uh, Cultural Heritage and uh, Famous uh, People from the um, your sorts of parts of the region of Ukraine. Uh, and it actually went well. It ended just a day ago, and now we are just trying to um, uh, review all the articles uh, that were made. It's like, I'm not sure what the number was, exact number, but uh, it's uh, quite a lot. So we have really strong um, cooperation with uh, different parts. Uh, yeah, also, uh, I'm super um, uh, grateful for uh, the topic uh, that was mentioned about how librarians are quite, can be quite closed and uh, not really... Um, sort of looking out of the box and trying to reach the new uh, ideas because of uh, Soviet uh, heritage. But um, uh, of course, yeah, there is some problems, but uh, there is some obstacles, but we are trying to really uh, sort of uh, build uh, and to explain to librarians what the Wikimedia movement is. And uh, yeah, in, in many ways it works. And yeah, I'm just yeah, grateful for your presentation. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you, Renvoy, for your comments. Uh, Claudia and uh, Strain, do you want to comment on this? Yeah, I was going to share that. That's why we wanted so to you have... You were nodding your head vigorously. Yeah, we wanted to have a librarian here with us so she can hear you and also she uh, she can reply to you about her process of... Um, understanding, you know, what this is all about. Um, and actually the time that librarians need to uh, invest in really repositioning uh, their uh, themselves to be, to be fully uh, able to participate. Uh, but nevertheless, librarians do come from institutions uh, that um, have a lot of information and they work with that information every day. So they are valuable uh, resources once we get them on the, our side, which I'm actually in both sides. So <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> It, it it is possible to be on the on the on two sides at the same time. It's absolutely possible. Uh, thank you very much for that comment, Serhi. Uh, you're you're next. Um, uh, my name is uh, Serhi Petrov. Uh, I'm uh, also member of uh, Wikimedia Ukraine uh, and uh, member of of the organization committee of the Quantum Staff for Librarians uh, and. Um, um, uh, I live in Kharkiv, uh, the city in the east of Ukraine, and uh, uh, with uh, regional uh, rivalry, uh, we uh, held for uh, three years uh, uh, the contest uh, for libraries uh, for, library, for librarians uh, from Kharkiv uh, for uh, Oblast, Kharkiv uh, region, uh, and. Um, uh for three years uh we'll uh, we, um our librarians uh, have uh, wrote uh, uh more than uh one hundred articles and uploaded uh, more uh than uh one thousand uh, photos and uh um mm, it's it's very difficult uh, to work with uh, librarians uh, from uh uh, mm, uh, towns uh, and uh, even villages uh, because uh, uh, they uh, haven't uh, enough uh, equipment, uh, uh, even uh, uh, notebooks uh, or uh, no, normal uh, computers. Uh, uh, and uh, Sometimes uh, they uh, haven't enough uh, time because uh, uh, they uh, have uh, a lot of uh, library and uh, 
uh, work, uh, uh, they uh, must uh, to participate uh, in a lot of uh, the another uh, contest uh, uh, from uh, Ministry uh, of Culture. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, I uh, work with librarians um, for 10 years. Uh, I can see that uh, for uh, for that time, uh, what um, the um, it, it uh, right uh, yeah, the interesting or uh, from uh, uh, the interesting uh, uh, of um, librarians at Wikipedia uh, is increase. Thank you, Sergey. No. Do you want to comment on this? I, I would like to comment because uh, on Go the on. previous. Um, um, uh, thank you. Thank you also for for the for that comment. Um, um, right before you started to to talk, I was going to. I have to mention something. I have to mention something. So um, there are many types of libraries, and their um, uh, trauma, if you will, professional trauma, is different. Um, there, there's a national library. Uh, who really has uh, an understanding, at least from the Romanian context, what I'm sharing, it's my Romanian context that I know, uh, but I've seen it very uh, well playing out in other countries. So the National Library is holding the values. When you approach them, um, you need to really be, um, already have a trust relation uh, because they really need to trust you to open up. There are university libraries who are really into teaching. So if you can convince them that this is useful for the students, they might let you in. But there's the most, in terms of numbers, um, public libraries are the most in our countries. Um, and public librarians really are rethinking their roles now. Um, we, they are in the process of doing that. So the more we, we um, manage to train and bring new skills to them, uh, the better the, the quality of the services to the users in general, but also um, they can contribute better to, um, to the Wikimedia community. And um, it's true that not all of them have up-to-date computers and internet access, but um, on our region there, um, and in other parties, but from the, from the region, there has been a, a, a international program called Global Libraries, which brought computers uh, in the libraries um, from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but the purpose of those computers was for the public to uh, use them freely. Um, this was a few years back, so if they didn't get any kind of support, probably uh, most of the computers uh, are a little, bit, a little bit obsolete. However, I know of uh, a lot of uh, initiatives that are re, re um, updating the, the, the uh, computers uh, in public libraries. And even in our in Ukraine, uh, the partnership that exists between um, uh, city libraries and uh, rural libraries can uh, take this to ways in which the libraries can get new technology. Uh, if the librarians are invested in the idea of uh, the collaboration, uh, they will find ways to also bring the technology to make it possible. Thank you for, for the, the, the nice uh, success partnership story from Ukraine. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jacob, you, you, you are next. Thank you. Yes, I'm interested in uh, what exactly uh, is the benefit for librarians to acquire new knowledge around Wikimedia and how this helps them in everyday work. Because I think we often project things on them that are our demands and don't really listen if they are maybe overworked, uh, stressed, if they work with, with technology that they are not comfortable with or, or stuff like this. And uh, I, I fear that there is a lot of uh, distance that needs to be uh, kind of uh, bridged to, to make this collaboration equal. And I just had the, the first um, uh, session on Thursday with uh, librarians in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina and just hearing them 
how they try to multitask while I, while they are listening to my uh, Wikimedia talk for two hours and doing their work. I felt really bad about conditions and what we maybe uh, have to be more conscious of when we approach them. Thank you Thank for the question. Andre, I would like if you can start answering and then I can, because uh, sure. you have been, uh, you know, <laughs> trying to work with librarians. Uh, there are many things that, um, that, get, that can encourage them. Uh, some are uh, directly related to their work. For instance, a library which uh, does digitization work will be interested in um, spreading their work, right, and getting their work uh, known. And while they might have a website, they might have a very good website sometimes, um, it's still not enough to attract people, right? Uh, Wikipedia is in the top 10 or whatever we are now, um, websites in the world, so the audience is much more significant. Google has uh, Wikipedia results high up uh, there with in the first page for pretty much any article. Uh, so this can be one thing that motivates them. Another one uh, might be uh, that they want to learn something new. They want to learn a way to um, to write content on the internet. And we we've had cases where uh, some librarians said, you know, I can't really write. It was a very interesting experience, but I can't really write that way. Uh, that way main, means uh, in a neutral point of view. Um, so, um, you know, it, the, the experience might vary, uh, but, uh, some of them are related directly to their capabilities. Uh, maybe their, their boss wants them to develop their, um, their IT capabilities by, you know, doing what something they know in a new environment that it might not be that familiar to them. And they will do that slowly, much more slowly than yourself. Uh, but also, uh, in a different way than yourself. And that's the big advantage, I think. The diversification that it brings to the community. And over to you, Claudia. Yeah, and I would add this um, in terms of uh, public librarians, which is um, I'm working with public librarians in other projects in our foundation. We, we you know, this is my job. Uh, to work with librarians to help them uh, provide new library services for their communities. So I, I know their struggle, uh, and it's a real struggle. But um, uh, what other options are, are, are out there for librarians um, than to actually update the, the, their skills and really be part of the conversation about um, community development um, and I would say um, heritage. Uh, with public librarians, traditionally, uh, one of the role, um, especially in small communities, is to keep the memory of the community alive. Uh, and that's for them meant, uh, you know, writing a monography uh, and have it on a shelf in their in their library. Uh, nobody reads that um, uh, monography and in return on Wikipedia, for example, we still have that community having maybe just one line about it and no picture. Um, so it's actually to the benefit of their own work to, uh, to figure out uh, how to contribute, but there's no way they could really understand all this. So mm -hmm. we need to, to, to help them with small portions like Wikilove's Romania, for example, efforts uh, to tell a little bit more about their communities. And I had librarians in the past week uh, telling me that, oh my God, there's no picture of this and this in my community. I have to go take those pictures and upload them on Wikipedia. Uh, and they're actually doing that. We still have uh, two more weeks of the campaign. So I'm really hoping for some good results from librarians. Okay, thank you. I'm going to let in one more uh, comment or question from uh, Renvoy, and uh, we will be closing down this session. Renvoy? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I have just a, a little remark that I, I completely agree with this remark, about this remark about uh, different uh, libraries, like national libraries that are keeping to themselves their, um, their resources. Because, yeah, in Lviv, for example, we have a big 
big library, uh, Stefan library, maybe which will be familiar with that because uh, in Poland it is quite famous for uh, also under a solenium. Mm -hmm. So uh, and uh, they have unique unique sources of information, but they just don't want to give them public source. Uh, although it is uh, many of these sources are already under the public domain right now. So, uh, but yeah, we are trying to make this work. We are trying to reach out with some uh, proposals, and uh, maybe uh, in in future we will uh, make something very uh, unique in sort of sense. Also, I want just to make a remark that we are uh, also in Wikimedia Ukraine trying to the next year to reach, uh, to join completely this uh, only one rep um, movement. So uh, I think that this will be also a big, uh, big success. Yeah, thanks. All right. Especially Thank if you're you. taking the Library Association as a partner. <laughs> what why I'm really 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 pushing um, is, is um, because the librarians have good networks, professional networks. They have international conferences where they meet. There's a, a cohort of librarians, mostly from the Western countries, who talk and are really proud about their collaboration with Wikimedia communities. Um, and my effort within the, the my day, <laughs> my job uh, is to build a network of librarians who are courageous and innovative in the region, in the Black Sea East European region. Um, but I, you know, preparing for this talk, I realized that it would be great if we can, you know, connect this network that um, they're building from librarians with your community uh, and, uh, you know, share good practices and encourage librarians because the good, good idea is that once they internalize um, um, and uh, consider their job to update a Facebook page, a uh, Wikipedia page, uh, they will update it. They do this on Facebook all the time. Uh, but they don't see that uh, the value of doing the same time and effort uh, put into Wikipedia, it's much, it's much more rewarding for themselves and for their communities. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Claudia, and thank you, Andre. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you opened so much space for, for discussion, that you left so much space for discussion. I'm going to stop the recording now as we ran out of time for this session. Uh, we have about eight minutes. Uh, breather time, um, and then Alex Stinson and Ilana Fried, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, forgive me if I didn't, uh, will uh, we'll take over with building organizer tools for the future of campaigns. Thank you.